So we're joined today by former Labor Party leader, Mark Latham. Uh, how are you, Mark? Yeah, good, thanks, Tom. Good to be with you. Uh, thanks for joining us. So I was just wondering, um, obviously we're at the International Conference for Men's Issues. I was just wondering what your um, involvement with the movement is specifically. Well, I've been a voice over many years to say that there's a lot of men's issues that need to be addressed. Uh, I lock horns with left feminists as often as I can because, uh, you know, they've got the wrong perspective and... Uh, they haven't recognised the many advances for women in, in, in Australian society and, and a lot of the issues of disadvantage now are about uh, men. So I try to articulate those as often as possible and I think you know, it doesn't really matter, male, female and all this other baloney about identity politics, if there's an individual in need or a small group in need, then on fairness grounds you've got to try and help them. Fair enough. Okay, so um, obviously you've recently joined the Liberal Democrat Party. Um, now I'm curious, um, obviously there's quite a few parties in Australia vying for that, I suppose, alternative right vote, so to speak. You've got Benani's Conservatives, One Nation, the Liberal Democrats, even Bob Catter's party to a lesser extent. What was it that made you choose the Liberal Democrats uh, specifically? Well, they're a party of freedom and uh, I've long argued uh, for the open economic model, economic freedoms, and in recent times I think social freedoms, particularly free speech, have become more important. So the last thing I wanted to do was ever go to a party that had restrictions on uh, debate, restrictions on speech or restrictions on on, on social activity. So uh, I like the Liberal Democrat philosophy and, and very happy to be part of it. And would you say that you identify as a libertarian? Yeah, I've always uh, been a small L liberal. I was when I was inside the, the Labor Party, particularly on the economic agenda and all the social issues that have come up recently. I think um, classical liberalism and libertarian ideas have a lot to offer. The average Australian is after more freedom instead of identity politics, PC, social engineering, cultural Marxism, all the things that have been running through our institutions. Okay, and um, obviously you you know you do have a background in the Labor Party, um, and you have written books discussing, I suppose, the toxic culture that we see within mainstream politics in Australia. I was just curious to understand um, a little bit of the background on that, and where specifically do you think it was? At what point in time did the Labor Party start to go off the rails to some extent? Uh, well, I think the the rise of machine politics, the apparatchik, the factions in the 90s was a poisonous turning point in that, you know, the ethos of machine politics is that an interest group knocks on your door, welcome them in and, and, and listen to their policy demands and, and say, yeah, we'll support all that if you can vote for us at election time. So Labor's been overwhelmed by machine politics and interest groups, whether you're talking about left feminists or environmental groups or ethnic groups or identity political groups. And the interesting thing that's happened is that the Liberal Party probably over the last 10 to 15 years has also been infected by machine politics. So the same interest groups that have um, consumed Labor politics have, have, have also had a big influence inside the Liberals. So you're not, you're not getting any difference now between Labor and Liberal Party politics. They've become almost identical because they've been overrun and caved in to the same type of interest groups. So uh, you know, you look at the last budget, for instance, uh, tax and spend and debt and deficit, Australia in large parts has become a one-party state. So supporting alternative uh, third-party forces has become more important than ever. Okay, and in terms of your involvement with the media, so obviously you started Mark Latham's Outsiders and you've recently gotten involved with the Rebel Media, the Canadian uh, media organisation. Could you explain to us a little bit more about your um, arrangement that you've got with the, the Rebel Media? Yeah, we've formed a partnership. Rebel's had amazing success in, in Canada and, and, and North America and they, they, they've established uh, um, franchises, if you like, in the United Kingdom and France and wanted to do something in Australia and I said, well, you know, I've got a profile here with Mark Latham's Outsiders and Rebel Media's got uh, a lot of um, uh, technical know-how and experience in alternative media and, and, and political campaigning. So it just made a lot of sense to join forces and uh, establish a partnership and hopefully it'll do some really good things on, on outsider type politics in Australia. Okay, and in terms of, um, I suppose, what you're doing in the longer term, obviously you've got your media interests going on, but you've also obviously uh, rejoined the, uh, I suppose, the political scene by joining the Liberal Democrats. Where do you envision yourself in the long term? Do you want to be a journalist or are you looking at a return to the uh, political arena potentially? Well, I've never really been a journalist, a commentator. I, I think there's, there's a whole bunch of important issues where you don't hear the other side because of the dominance of mainstream media. Mainstream media in Australia is very restrictive now. There are certain subjects that are taboo, certain opinions that uh, aren't aired, certain views that they're uncomfortable with. So to be there putting out the 
other side of the story as best I can, I think is an important role and, and, and that's the one I want to pursue. With the Liberal Democrats, I'm just a member. I'm not uh, necessarily committed to running for Parliament. Again, the opportunity might arise, but it's not, uh, it's not something we're working out in the immediate uh, foreseeable future. Hey, Mark Latham, thanks for your time. Pleasure, thank you.